So now we're going to listen to the story of creation as found in chapter 2 of Genesis. This is another account of creation, not the one that's in chapter 1 where you get the six days of God labouring and then on the seventh day resting. This <coughs> is a different way of looking at the same story. And so we're going to begin reading in chapter 2 at verse 4, halfway through verse 4. In the day that the Lord God made the, the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise up from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And to verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to the man to see what the man, uh, what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs, and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and brought her to the man. And then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother, and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and were not ashamed. Amen. So God created a beautiful, wonderful garden. A garden that uh, almost defies description. And I imagine it being filled with all the different kinds of trees and flowers of every different colour and every different hue. And... Even the gold medal winners at Chelsea Flower Show would have seen that theirs would have just hailed into insignificance alongside this incredible garden that God created it. And into this amazing place, God planted all the animals and the birds and the man and the woman. Now, God didn't give Adam and Eve lots of rules, or even as far as we know, ask them to do a risk assessment. If he'd asked them to do a risk assessment, maybe they wouldn't have eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but hey ho rather God gave them permission permission to do all kinds of things permission to work the garden permission to eat the fruit of every tree except the fruit of the aforementioned tree and God doesn't invite us simply to hold out to hold out our hands and receive from him he invites us to work with him as co-creators he always has done and he always will do God loves to be working in partnership with us. Now, work in the soil is widely recognised as being good for you. Lots of research has been done recently, and something we all knew anyway was that it's good to get out and to work and get your hands dirty and to really create something, make something grow. And uh, I was listening to a speaker on the radio the other day who was talking about this, that during the time of lockdown, he would go, he went out into his garden and he purposefully worked uh, without gloves because he just loved the feel of the soil and, and the plants and the textures and just get into grips literally get into grips with with nature now i know everyone doesn't have a garden but even just planting pots to, to house pots house plants even that can just give us that sense of well-being that we've actually created something and worked in partnership uh, with nature the, the speaker on the radio even said that weeding had uh, given him a sense of job satisfaction 
once we got that in the Garden of Eden, of course, because Adam and Eve didn't have to worry about wheat. But that's another story. And the speaker spoke of the joy he found in tending those plants and just watching them grow and flourish. And he recognised that he was working in partnership with the earth. And I would add that he was working in partnership with God as a co-creator. Now, creating a, a garden, a beautiful garden of any size, whether it's a small plot, a window box, or even a, a country mansion, you know, vast spreading garden, is to work with God. And it's to create a place where the harvest is not simply fruit and flowers or vegetables, but it's beauty and joy. It gives the gardener a sense of joy and all those who visit and see it. It gives a sense of, of wonder at the things that we can see. And the account of creation in Genesis 2 reminds us of this. And Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, takes it a whole lot further. Because we're no longer just speaking of a garden, but the whole earth and everything in it. All living things produce a harvest, from sheep and their lambs, fish in the sea. And today around us, even in, in Rosendale, we've got llamas and there's goats. And I'm told that there's a buffalo farm in the Midlands somewhere, uh, run by a former Formula One a racing driver. And he produces some of the best ice cream from that buffalo milk that ever was. And all of this, all of this we can thank God for. Remembering that God is a generous God who, who loves to pour out his blessings on his people. God, the creator of the whole earth and everything in it, obviously loves variety, colour, and just simply making things, creating things, just for the joy of it. How God must smile when we put our God-given gift of creativity into action and produce wonderful art, music, poetry, prose. And what about chefs? We've all enjoyed a beautiful meal, I'm sure. What about designers, architects, photographers, playwrights? You can keep adding on to that list. Feel free to add to that list and keep it going. You know, others who create harvests of beauty, of wonder and of joy. And pray for these people. Pray for these people who are so creative. That might include yourself, which is wonderful. And there's a, there's a prayer here by Jill, Jill Webber that uh, I think might help us. God, I pray for those who create and cultivate beauty, joy and wonder. Give them eyes to see the beauty you have created on the earth. May they be bold messengers, carrying beauty through their craft. May they produce a harvest to enrich all our lives. You know, take some time to, to pray that kind of prayer and pray by name for any artists or chefs or, or poets or musicians or, and all those other people that were mentioned. Any that you know by name, pray for them by name giving thanks for the ways in which they have enriched your life by their use of their creative gifts. As Adam and Eve were planted in the Garden of Eden, invited to work with God as gardeners and stewards, so too you and I have been planted in the places where we live. And one of the challenges of the harvest season is to focus on that place where God has planted you. There will probably be more than one place, obviously, but just try focusing on one. And as you focus on that place, Ask, how can I work with God to enable my home, to enable my school, my university, my workplace, my community, whichever one you choose. Ask how you can work with God to, to enable your place to bloom and produce a harvest that glorifies God. Work in partnership. Seek God's will. Ask God to, to show you where that might be and how you might do that. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians, reminds us that we have been saved by grace through faith. Faith in Christ Jesus, of course, and through his death and resurrection. And then he goes on and says, and that we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Our faith leads us to want to do good, to do good things. And God has promised that he has all kinds of wonderful things, good works, prepared for us, to get involved with, so that we can work with him in building his kingdom to produce a harvest of justice, of joy, of peace and of love. Now, one of my favourite books is called Shadow of the Almighty by Elizabeth Elliot. Uh, Shadow of the Almighty is a quote from Psalm 91. You might want to look that up. 
And the book is the story of Jim Elliot, Elizabeth Elliot's husband, who in 1956, with several of his friends and colleagues, were murdered in Ecuador by men of the Wadoni people, who they were trying to reach with the good news of Jesus. The Wadoni, also known pejoratively as Aukas, which is the local word for savages, they were an isolated people who were known for their violence, both against their own people and against outsiders, anybody who entered into their territory. Now, after those five men were killed, you'd think that maybe Elizabeth Elliot, the wife of Jim, and the wives and, and fiancé and, and the rest of, of, of the other men would have just not wanted anything more to do with uh, mission work or trying to share the name of Jesus. But within three years of that tragedy, Elizabeth Elliot, Valerie, who was Jim and Elizabeth's daughter, and Rachel Saint, who was the sister of the pilot uh, Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel Saint, who had also died, they were living in a Wadoni village teaching the Indians about a forgiving Christ, and soon a Christian church was established among that Wadoni people. Seeds of faith had been sown, and a harvest of souls was reaped. A further harvest was reaped when, because of the men's self-sacrifice, many more Christians volunteered for the mission field, and the work grew. And you can read all about this on Mission Aviation Fellowship's uh, um, website. One of uh, Jim Elliot's favourite sayings was this, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Jim Elliot and his friends had been willing to give up to sow what they could not keep which was their lives, in order to gain what they could not lose. That's a resurrection to eternal life. They sowed their own lives and reaped a harvest of souls for Christ. And they did all this for the love of Jesus and the longing that Jesus might himself receive the harvest of a people from every tongue, tribe and nation. A reading... <coughs> Uh, that we can pick up uh, on in Revelation chapter 5, where in John's vision of heaven, the 24 elders and the four living creatures bow down before, before the Lamb, before Jesus, and they sing a new song. You, Jesus, are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you, you ransomed for God's saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Well, that is an awesome our harvest. We're not called to travel to dangerous places, or we're not all called to travel to dangerous places to reap a harvest of souls. We are all called, however, to faithfully work with God as his co-creators, through the power of his Holy Spirit, to sow the seeds of his kingdom, and to reap a harvest. And the seeds that we are to sow, well, they're not only seeds of justice, of peace, of faith and joy and love, but also seeds of beauty and of wonder. Seeds that produce harvests that enrich everyone's lives. So sow your seeds. Tend your gardens. Grow beautiful flowers. Paint stunning pictures. Write inspiring stories. Play wonderful music. Cook delicious meals. Whatever it is that you do, do it. Sow your talent. Sow your talent. Produce a harvest that overflows with joy and wonder that the whole of God's earth and everything in it might glorify God and the whole earth might be filled with wonder, with love and with praise. Sow your seeds. Reap a harvest. Amen. Earlier on in the service, I mentioned the name Jehovah Jireh, which Jah, Jehovah Jireh, which means God, the one who provides, a God who provides. And so there's a song in Mission Praise. It's number 354, Jehovah Jireh. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you've come across that one before, but there's a link to the song, and uh, I think it's uh, it's a good listen, and it's good to join in as well. And then of course you can also um, sing along with. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. So there's two really upbeat songs there that you can sing and dance to in your, in your living rooms. And then there's a third song this time, For the Fruits of His Creation, which is a more reflective hymn and, and leads us into our prayers of intercession. So enjoy those songs 
and then uh, and then we'll pray uh, together.